Welcome everyone. Uh, Pam and I are really excited to be able to speak with you. Um, as Pam uh, mentioned, this session is going to be very interactive today. We really want to have a Q&A and um, enable folks to ask questions and to chat about, you know, what's been going on during COVID with the job searching um, and things like that. So we're excited to be able to um, chat with you guys. Uh, my name is Carl Coffey. I serve along with Pam on the National Stuttering Association's Board of Directors as the co-chair of special projects. Yep. Thank you, Carl. Um, yep. I'm Pam, Pam, Pamela Mertz. And uh, 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 as Carl said, we're both co-chairs for special projects and we're actively involved in the we stutter at work um initiative and one of the things that we've uh off off offered and i'll and i'll proudly say have done really well um was we've had a number of stuttering at work webinars um and we've you know had a lot of positive feedback from them so we're really delighted to um, offer another one today and have it be a little bit more conversation oriented as opposed to content oriented so yep. take it away, Carl. Awesome. All right, well, let's jump right in. So if my computer will let me jump right <laughs> in. Okay. So as I mentioned, our topic today is going to be focused around job searching during COVID. Um, I'm sure wherever in the world you are, you've been impacted by COVID in one way or or another. And I think that it's really important for us to just acknowledge that we're in some weird times <laughs> and you know that things can be very very difficult for a lot of folks you know we don't really have a we don't really have a uh, normal as you would uh, define it and when it comes to job searching that's enabled us to have to be um, flexible and and also adaptable to a changing uh, landscape um you know um i think that we have to acknowledge that things are tough and also acknowledge that we're going to get through it um and that you know we'll be uh better for it on the other side um so along with the uh job search um kind of taking a different shape um that means that a lot of our of our opportunities to interview have been um have been uh moving uh virtual as well and so i know a lot of folks have been using things like zoom and skype in order to connect to co-workers on a day-to-day -day basis but they've also been having to do that when it comes to interviewing as well and so that kind of changes things a bit um pam is going to talk about that of a little bit later, uh, more specifically in terms of what's changed, um, but also what's uh, stayed the same as well, even though we've gone virtual and having to do a lot of our interviewing that way. Um, as I've said, and as I know you'll you'll uh, probably hear if you uh, turn on the news, you know, it's important to stay uh, motivated. You know, things are weird and, you know, we aren't able to do a lot of the same things as we were, you know. Um, I actually had a friend who had, um, who actually got married uh, not too long ago. And because they couldn't invite a lot of people to be in person, they actually uh, live streamed their, their wedding on Zoom. Yeah. You know, so there's just a lot of weird uh going on right now but it's really important for us to stay uh motivated you know and we can do that by you know by um we can do that by ensuring we uh stay connected to our friends and family the the nsa has offered a lot of programming 
like our annual conference that has actually gone uh, virtual that we had uh, last month and, you know, offering things like in NSA connects, which we'll talk a little bit about at the end of our, um, of our <laughs> webinar today, you know, but it's really important that even though things are odd, you know, for us to stay uh, motivated um, as we, as we continue our day to day. Um, along with that, it's important for us to to capitalize on this time too. So if you find yourself with a little bit more free time, uh, maybe focus on uh, learning a skill that you've always wanted to pick up, but you you know have said you've uh, never had the time to do. Or uh, focus on updating your LinkedIn profile or updating your <laughs> resume. Um, there's a lot, you know, of things that we can do now um, in order to best use our time. And uh, last but not least, it's really important to have a plan A, maybe a plan B, and and and, and possibly a plan C as well. <laughs> um, so, for example, if you were thinking about applying to be a stewardess for an to be a stewardess for an airline company and that's like your dream job, you know, it might be tough to get in that field right now. And so uh, possibly think about what are some other, other things you can do in order to, you know, uh, stay employed, but also how can you still pursue your passions as well? Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Pam and she's going to continue us on. Yeah, great. So before I talk about um, interviewing still being important, I just want to kind of pig, pig, piggyback a little on what Carl was saying. Um, yes, this is a difficult time. Um, but I also think it's important that we don't ignore the trauma. Um, for many of us, we're suffering grief and loss. Um, uh, and when I talk loss, I'm talking about, you know, having lost jobs. And uh, um, there's so many that have lost jobs, and that is still something that you 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 grieve because you you've lost your normalcy, perhaps your um, your self identity because it's often tied up tied tied into work with us. Um, so it's it's really okay to um, be mourning what we're missing. But we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about interviewing. It's absolutely, it is still important. Um, like Carl said, the format has def, 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 definitely changed. Um, for many of us, we are um, doing phone interviews, which we know that pe pe people who stutter um, really, really often struggle, struggle with. And we are also doing um, video chat interviews. And sometimes um, when you're doing like a Zoom interview, uh, there's likely to be more than one person. And sec sec secondly, if you're like me at all, I don't really like to see myself stuttering. <laughs> um, I, I just so it's something that you really have to get 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 used to. Um, particularly if you're going to plan to advertise or disclose your stuttering. Um, it's a great time to utilize resources that are out there, um, one of which is um, the NSA's mock interview uh, program, which falls under our We Stutter at Work. And I think a lot of people are still unaware that this is a free serv serv service that the NSA offers. And it's an opportunity for a person who stutters to have a practice interview session with another person who, who, who stutters. Um, so that, that fear of judgment is re, re, removed and you can kind of play around a little bit with, um, what and how disclosure might, 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 might look like. Um, you could also take advantage of friends and family. Uh, definitely, uh, Ask friends to um, maybe help you with your practice interview. Um, ask them to maybe listen to your 60 second elevator pitch just to make sure that, um, you know, that, that you feel 
feel comfortable uh, about about that. And many other people are likely to be applying for the same job um, simply because we've had a record number of jobs um, uh, lost during this this time of COVID. Um, so that is just something that we just uh, need to be aware of. Jobs right now, the job market is um, probably more challenging now than it was a year ago. Um, so again, when we talk about utilizing those 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 resources, there are so many video chat technologies now. Um, like today, we're on Zoom. Um, there's also FaceTime. If you use use Apple pro pro products, there is Google Meet and Microsoft Team. There's WebEx. Um, so there 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 are lots of different plat plat platforms, but they're all there essentially for the same reason, to help us stay connected. Um, and perhaps, as you know, and Carl meant, meant, mentioned, um, the NSA has utilized these resources for our um, great virtual conference that we had last month, NSA at Home. Uh, and and I, th I thought that in some ways that uh, virtual con con conference was a little bit more intimate actually than the in-person uh um uh conferences that we've had just because um you 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 were able to spend more time on uh, one topic and um and and have questions answered and the nsa has um offered um some nsa connects events and towards the end of our time here we will um point 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 you to those resources if you'd like to um have them happen and we can still network during covid times um nsa chapter meetings um have gone virtual um I don't happen to have a physical NSA chapter, chapter, chapter meeting in my local area. So I've attended, um, other people's virtual, uh, NSA chap, chap, chapter meetings. And it's just been great to be able to stay connected like that. And Toastmasters, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Toast, Toast, Toastmasters. Um, I was a Toastmaster for eight years. Uh, and I was accustomed to in-person meetings and now Toastmasters, just like just about everything else have gone on, on, online to adapt to current times. Um, and again, it's just one more opportunity where you can practice public speaking in a, in a friendly envi envi environment that will also provide you with feed feed feedback i'm gonna um hand it back over to, to to carl yeah so as i mentioned we um our goal and our expectation for this session was to be very interactive and we want to hear from you um we want to you know chat about what you've been what you've been uh doing since uh covid again in terms of if 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 you've had to be on the job search um so our first question to kind of get us kicked off is have you had to job hunt since covid began and if so what has that experience been like for you um we do have the chat box uh, feature if you would like to use that but we in but we in but we encourage you um to uh to, to, we encourage you to use your, uh, we encourage you to use your uh, microphone and your uh, video as well. So um, I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen, which is uh, something that I uh, normally don't get a chance to do, so I can kind of see everyone, um, and we can start our Q and A session um, and kind of go from there. So I saw that Adam uh, raised his hand. So Adam, if you uh, would like to um, unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, we're still not hearing you. 
Okay, so um, you can work on your um, audio settings, and and we'll come back back to you for sure. Um, I I see that Andrea Mitchell has indicated yes, she's in the middle of a job search now. Um, she had a Zoom interview earlier, and yesterday she had a phone interview. Andrea, would you like to share um, what that was like without feeling too put on the spot? <laughs> Um, and Andrea, are you comfortable um, sharing what your experience was like? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, for the Zoom interview earlier today, I think it went well. Uh, my stuttering wasn't too much of a problem. I think yesterday I stuttered more during the um, the phone interview. But, but I think they, they both went well. Good, good. Did you disclose that you that you that, that you stuttered during the interviews? No, I I still don't have the courage to say it. <laughs> I'm going to have to say it one day, but no, I did not. And that's okay. That's what, that's, that's what these sessions are um, about. And we had a, we had a webinar, um, I believe at the end of last year on disclosure, um, because that is a tough, a tough, a tough one. Um, oftentimes we don't know if we should do it. And if we decide um, that we'd like to, we don't know where in the interview and how maybe some, some, sometimes to throw that in, but congratulations on uh, um, getting those two, those two interviews. Thank you. Um, Carlos Delgado, you, you're, you're actively job searching and you had an interview on Friday. Um, would you like to share uh, what this has been like? Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I am actively searching, waiting on the one that I had on August 4th. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be to go back to Canada. Um, um, so I am excited about that because um, my working visa issues is getting messier down here. So, um, um, but they called me for another job. Uh, they wanted to have a phone call and I asked them if it was okay uh, to be on Zoom. It was the first one and they said yes. So we had um, a first it was a first interview last Tuesday over Zoom, half an hour, and they and they called me back on Friday um, um, for for two more, and those two more are going to be over Zoom tomorrow and next Tuesday, and that will be to stay here where I am currently at in uh, in um, DC. Okay, great. Well, how? How did you feel about those interviews? Um, did you feel com did you feel comfortable? Did you disclose stuttering? Um, I've been on Zoom a lot since March, so I guess that I am getting comfortable with it. Um, I did not disclose this time, but I typically do do it. Um, um, in the other ones that I have had before in July and in June, I guess, I did say that, but those were not, um, but in these two times I did not, I, I, I think that I knew the topic quite well. So I, you know, I, I, I was not, you know, it was not that I was not ready to, to say it, but at that point, I I felt that it was not something that, that I should say. They, I guess, picked it up, um, <laughs> but I didn't care if I, you know, uh, started. So, 
That's great. And um, uh, kudos to you as well for, you know, um, being cora- cora- courageous enough to request having a video chat via a phone, a phone chat, because as we said earlier, the phone presents a lot of challenges to um, pe- pe- people who stutter. So I'm glad to see that you felt you could, um, you know, stand up for yourself and request uh, an, uh, an, uh, an accommodation. Um, Carl, you made a good point uh, in the chat about uh, about Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that um, you know I've heard from my friends, uh, people who stutter and people who don't stutter. You know, we've been on Zoom uh, a lot of us for work, you know, or 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 for an essay uh, for related events. Uh, some folks have had uh, family uh, meetings over Zoom, you know, and it's been really great as a way to stay connected when, you know, we may not be able to see people in person, but it's been a lot, <laughs> you know, and, you know, there, there, there are folks who have had to be on Zoom for work all day. And then, you know, they are uh, meeting with friends in the in the evening time as well. So I feel like, you know, we can kind of get overwhelmed with just uh, so much, you know, uh, Zoom and uh, being virtual. And so I try and keep that in mind, you know, when I'm uh, talking to people as well, uh, because I think, you know, it is important for us to as well, you know, be able to unplug uh, sometimes and kind of just be. So I think that that, you know, is kind of a fine balancing act that we have to, um, you know, do as well. For sure. And, you know, I'd just like to comment on that. Um, I recently read an article from uh, 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 an NSA member out of New York City, um, Emma Alpern, who's a wonderful writer, and she wrote a piece about Stutterbox. And it was really interesting to read her perspective of well, what did that mean? It means this. We're all in a little box on a screen. Um, and, and that's not tip, tip, typically how we communicate with each other. So just like you said, uh, Carl, and reading Emma's piece, you know, it's, it's, it's strange to be seeing yourself on Zoom, but also seeing 20 other peop- people and not really not really sure if we can or are making eye contact. Um, So it's just, that's a very interesting, interesting for sure time that, that, that we're in. Um, I see that um, Tim, Tim can, Tim Kincaid uh, mentioned over in the chat that he's actively job searching. Uh, Tim, would you like to, would you like to share um, your experience? Sure. Um, I've had some good ones and some bad ones. So, (laughs) um, I've had a lot of ones just over, over the, uh, over the, over the, um, even though when I've like asked to not do phone, they just, here's the phone number. And that's that. Um, those generally don't go well, not because of me per se, just because like I find a lot of times they when I say you know I am a a a person who 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 who. St- others I can tell it kind of from them like they don't really <laughs> respond well and I've had some interviews that were extremely short um from that and but last week I had one over Zoom it was interesting 
because it was it it was timed. Um, I did well during the interview, but because it was. Um, they kept saying that throughout, like you have, you know, like, and then it just kind of made it a little worse for me in my head. And then I wasn't able to speak as much as I would, um, on, on, uh, on, on, on some of the, of the, Items is just because I knew I wouldn't um, answer everything during during that during that that uh, that uh, set amount. So. Thank you, thank you, Tim. Um, have you have you have you heard back from uh, any 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 of those interviewers? Um, heard back from most of them, and most of them were. Thanks, but no, the one over Zoom actually, I I didn't think I was gonna go further, but they just said we're gonna do a uh, a a a I get interview, so we'll see how well I do on that one. Yeah, good luck and thank you for sharing. Thanks. Um, is there anybody else that would like to share something or um ask a question? A question? A question? You can raise your hand either visually or use the um the zoom uh, feature to raise, to raise your hand. Uh, while we're waiting for a, a question, I was going to say, I was looking at the chat um, and I know that uh, someone had uh, mentioned, I think it was Carlos had uh, mentioned, he asked the company if he could meet over zoom, um, you know, as opposed to doing a phone call. And I thought, you know, that, that, that was really neat. And I was going to share, a story from uh, someone who I had done a mock interview with. She was preparing to do an, she was preparing to do an interview with one company and that interview fell through and she actually got a phone call from a recruiter from another company that basically wanted to do an interview on the spot, which I think for most people, that would be a very anxiety producing, uh, you know, type thing, because of course, if you're looking for a job, you know, you want to appear to be available and open things like that. And she actually, you know, she said that when she got the call, she had no idea what company this was or what the role was for, because she had been applying to so many things. And so, and so instead of just saying, Hey, yeah, we can chat now. She said, Hey, actually now's not a good time for me. Can we actually set up something? Um, and so she was able to set up some time in the future to talk to the recruiter, which I thought was really good because she was able to feel uh, more prepared after she c could actually do her research to see what the job was for and, you know, to, and to be able to uh, tailor her to tailor her answers uh, more uh, specifically to that role. Yeah, that that's that that's really good. Um, uh, that 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 she had the courage um, and felt confident enough to <clears throat> bring that bring that up. Mm -hmm. um, I see in the chat that Jennifer um, shared uh, that that she's in a job search and hasn't found the right company yet. Um, Jennifer, would you be willing to share, 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 um, how that's been going? Yeah. So hi everybody. Um, I haven't really talked very much on this, so this is kind of new for me. 
But yeah, most of the job searches that I've been doing, the employer or the recruiter will ask you to do an interview, and it's usually through the phone. And I've I've asked a couple of people, you know, to try to do a video interview or just something alternative. I've even asked to come in, even during this COVID time. It's like, I'd rather come in and show my whole person. Mm. But most of the time, they usually have to go through the motions. I don't know if it's like a company policy or whatever, however they do it. But most of the time, they would just want to do like a phone interview. And I've tried, you know, without being too personal with them because you know they don't know me and I don't know them but I'm still trying to present myself in the best way um so it's been tough just trying to be open you know to things but at the same time trying to get past trying to get past the phone part which has been a struggle if you don't mind me asking another, um, uh, putting you on the spot quest question, when you've asked them for a video chat instead of a phone, a phone chat, did you disclose why? Um, I, that's tricky because on some of them I have, I have disclosed and told them directly but the most recent ones that i've done i just try to word it like i'm i'm able to give you a more personal view of me or a more i just try to word it as the phone is not really personable but seeing me i'm able to talk more about my skills and background so i just feel like i just kind of i don't know if that makes sense but I don't exactly tell them directly. I think probably I should, but it's just been hard to do that. <laughs> yeah, I can appreciate that. And I asked you um, about the disclosure because Andrew um, has asked a question in 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 the in the in the chat. Um, Carl, do you wanna do you wanna um, take Andrew's question? Sure. Um, I think that we could probably spend an hour alone just on a Q and a with people sharing their experiences with either deciding to disclose or not disclose. Um, I think that the disclosure webinar was one that I led, um, uh, last year. And so, you know, it's something that it's really near and dear to my heart and, um, has been something that I have, uh, personally struggled with because I think for me, my thought process was, well, I don't want anyone to see me as a person who stutters and thinks that I can't do the job. So I don't want to let people know that I stutter because I don't want them to think anything less of me. Um, and it really took me a long time to kind of change my, uh, to change my mindset on that. Um, and so I kind of put my toe in the water, so to speak, when it came to disclosing. So the first thing I did was on my resume under activities or affiliations, I think I put something about me being a chapter member in my local NSA chapter. And I wrote out a national uh, stuttering association. And I didn't, you know, uh, bring up the fact that I stuttered, but when I got to the interview, the interviewer, uh, they were curious about that. And so they asked me about, you know, what I did with that. And so that kind of allowed me to organically talk about stuttering and I was able to bring it up without having to say, Hey, I stutter. Um, you know, because that, that can be an awkward thing for folks. So that's something that I did that f f really helped me. Um, and I'm sure we have a lot of other folks here. I see, uh, Doug, I see Derek, and I don't want to put anyone on the spot, but I know that, you know, folks have stories where, you know, they may have uh, disclosed and, uh, maybe they can share what their experiences have been like as well. Yeah, because Andrew asked for some specific insight on if you do disclose where and how, mm -hmm. and, um, somebody else, um, I, I, Iram, um, uh, you know, thanked him for asking that question. 
um, and David Heaney, hi David from Ireland, um, uh, has a really good question there about, about, about disclosure. Um, when people disclose, do they explain what stuttering is and how it might impact the interview experience? I think that's a really good question. Would anybody uh, like to um, share how they would answer that? Besides me or Carl. <laughs> so the question is, in regards to disclosure, do you also explain what stuttering is? Melanie? <laughs> yes. Hi there, all. Um, so I, I have been looking for uh, for a job um, probably for uh, for about the past year. Um, I, I I had a, a job um, till uh, until G January. Um, so now it's more um, <laughs> looking and. I have had uh, had a lot of interviews, and so for for me, I have noticed that it helps to to tell them upfront because I like I I will start to to talk and know that I'm not totally fluent and so i'll just say hey at, uh, at times i stutter and it's just p part of who i am and it it doesn't oh my goodness it doesn't affect my work and normally they they don't ask and for <clears throat> sorry, from my experience, they they, they um, know um, what stuttering is. I think, and so, but but though I have told them that that for me, rather than like a stu stu stutter. Mine, it's uh, more like a a block, and so just at times I I don't get those words out. Thank you, Mel, Mel, Mel Melanie, for share for share for sharing that. And I heard a tiny little bit of a sigh, like maybe because you were feeling like it was challenging to speak up here. And I'm so glad you did, because of course this is a not judge judge judgmental um, area to share. Um, Ian would indicate it that he'd be happy to talk a little bit about um, disclosure. So, hey, Ian from the UK. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done a lot. I wasn't ever a sort of professional interviewer, but um, I've done a lot of interviewing in my roles, different roles in corporate life. And, um, you know, it's, it sounds a bit simplistic, but for every interviewer, there's an, in, there's somebody, there's an interviewee and an interviewer. And, and if we stutter, you know, we are one, we're just 1%, only 1% of adults stutter chances are your interviewer doesn't stutter um but and there and it's possible they may, may have never have heard a stuttering voice um you know as an interviewer i think you're often rushed you get the papers late uh it's the last thing you got time for to do that day you, you i used to find myself being quite nervous to to interview people and other people i know have said that so and what don't you like as an interviewer you don't like surprises you know, and you also want to to kind of connect with the person. So, you, you know, so we also know that to hear a stuttering voice, there's research, U.S. research out of uh, Mensa Cola or University or something like that in um, things, Pennsylvania, Western PA, um, that actually our brains struggle to listen to a stuttering voice, especially if we've not heard one before. 
and we know that that can set off a, a stress reaction in 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 the listener. So I'm trying to give the perspective of the interviewer interviewing a person who stutters. If you don't know that person's going to stutter and they start stuttering, that's a, that's a surprise. It also put makes you feel uncomfortable. We 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 know that we just have to accept that as people who stutter, but we can help the interviewer at least expect that we may or will stutter. So what I'm trying to say is help the interviewer accept our stuttering voice because I think to surprise them with a stutter partway through the interview is not helpful. It's not helpful to the interview because they're thinking, well, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, there was, there was that guy or that lady, that girl at school who stuttered. Yeah, yeah, what's going on? It's, it's, it's a shock. So in my perspective, um, is is to try and avoid surprises for the interviewer. Try and help them expect a stutter. Even even say, and this is kind of getting to disclosure. I'm, and I'm happy to answer questions about stuttering. Wow, what does that say? I'm confident in my vulnerability. I'm confident in who I am. And if you want to ask me a question, and 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 I've heard recruiters say, I was really impressed by that. You know, because actually I did feel uncomfortable with stuttering. And when I asked the question, it was really quite interesting. So um, that's just my experience. You know, in, in corporate world, I and so I think interviewers are often stressed, busy people, maybe a bit nervous. So help them interview you with your stutter, with with, with my stutter too, and I hope that helps. It does. Thank you, Ian. And some of that goes back to a earlier web web webinar that we did. Um, when you're the interviewer, so when the person who stutters is the inner, inner interviewer, just as you illustrate it, there comes, you know, there comes a whole different, um, appreciation level for the stress that can be involved in that. And you're so right. I have often interviewed, um, uh, um, as well, um, people. And sometimes I don't get their, get their resume until they're right in front of me, you know, and, and, and that is, that is definitely frust, 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 frustrating. Um, so I see we have a couple other questions. I'm trying to like, trying to do it in the first order. Um, I, I know that Jennifer had a piggyback question. So Jennifer, if you don't mind, we'll get back to you, but I want to give Jake a chance to, uh, uh, um, ask your question. Jake Call. Um, you're on mute. <laughs> okay. There you go. Sorry. Sorry. I should know better. I use this every day. Um, <laughs> no, so I actually just had a note. I so I didn't actually have a specific question, but um but I guess since I have the um the floor, I did really, really like something that, that Ian said about being able, to, um, to use the interview process as a time to disclose. Um, and I think one of the most positive experiences disclosing, you know, was when I just kind of, uh, I did it and I said, let me just use this not just to say, hey, I have this issue, right? Let's get it out of the way. But here's why it makes me like a much better person, right? Here's why it kind of sets me apart, right? I have, I feel like I have a much, um, a much higher sense of, of, um, emotional intelligence. You know, I can, I can really see if somebody's having a hard time with something, right? That, you know, a lot of people might just see and say, oh, well, that person's just, they're don't really know what they're doing or they're not sure what they're saying. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of times they do, they just, they, you know, it's, it's hard to get it from here out here sometimes. Um, so I think that's probably, um, the best experience I've had disclosing was being able to just kind of flip it on its head and say, I'll expose myself, but I'll show how it's an overall strength. 
that's really awesome, Jake. Thank you so much for share for share for sharing that. And it does allow us to frame stuttering any way we wish we wish we wish to. And you know, of course, when we exude con con confidence that we're okay with our stuttering, nine times out of ten that will allow the interviewer to um to uh, to to react in 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 kind and respect that con con confidence that 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 we have um and, yeah. oh i was gonna say i was just gonna share, share a really quick story about kind of when i was in the middle of an interview and i was completely uh bombing it <laughs> um so i so I was interviewing for a job and, you know, I had gotten to the point of the interview where it was in front of a panel. So I had about six or seven people on the panel. And I think the first two parts of the interview, it was one-on-one. -on -one. I maybe had two-on-one. -on -one. I did really well in those settings, but being in front of seven people and having them each kind of like spit and fire questions at me stressed me the heck out. And I noticed that I was starting to block. And when I get really stressed, I just tense up. And so I was blocking and that caused me to uh, switch around words. And I noticed I wasn't saying what I wanted to say. And I just kind of had to just stop. <laughs> and I said, hey, so I know you guys can see that I'm a person who stutters. And yes, I do stutter, but it hasn't stopped me from, you know, being able to do a lot of great things at work. Let me share with you some of those things. Mm -hmm. And so I know uh, a lot of times when we talk about disclosure, we talk about it's really important to kind of do it at the very beginning to get it out of the way, which I do uh, agree with. I think if you can get a great start, that's awesome. But I kind of had to pivot halfway through the interview. And I think that worked well for me because instead of them f focusing on like, okay, is this guy really nervous? Like, is he lying? You know, mm -hmm. they probably had no idea what was going on, but because I disclosed that made them focus on, okay, what is he saying? And not necessarily, how is it coming out? Um, so that really worked well for me in that particular situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just uh, uh, um, share something that's in the chat that um, uh, uh, Jennifer reacted to, but something from Jonathan uh, Lazenby. Laz Jonathan, would you like to just share what you wrote, if that's okay? So, yeah, you're, you're on mute. There we go. There okay. you go. <laughs> so, um, well... Well, it's um 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 kind of long here, but I mean, fluent speech um is uh um um uh um, uh, um, um does not uh, um um mean you have good communications um um. Skills, you know, a, 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 a lot of, 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 of fluent people are are not communicators, and um, and are um, are 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 pretty bad at it. And um, so it's in, it's in, it's more about uh, 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 listening and responding appropriately um, uh, with uh, um, uh, 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 maturity. And, um, and, um, not, uh, uh, reacting, you know, um, uh, um, th uh, th uh, um, th uh, um, through, th uh, through, through emotion. Cause I mean, that's pretty easy. Um, 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 uh, um, um, so that's my take. I appreciate it, Pam. 
Of course, uh, um, absolutely. And I like the way that you had ind 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 indicated that um, you don't see your stuttering as a weakness, but in fact, as a qualified fire fire for the job. So I really, I really just like, like, like how you worded that. Um, I want to bounce back to something that Jennifer asked, asked earlier. Um, and I'm curious how other people re, re, respond to this too. Um, when a job adver 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 advertisement indicates excellent communication skills required, um, how do people react to that? What are, what are, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, Pam, if yes. so, okay. Um, like um, Ian and you, I have also had a chance to be on both sides of this as an interviewee and an interviewer. And one of the things that you know we who stutter have to keep in mind is that. The interviewer has a job to do, and their job basically is to identify who they think is the best person that can get their the job done and fit in with the team that they have to work with, and that they usually have a you know, limited amount of time. Um, to try to get to know you and to try to ascertain if you have you know, basically the right stuff. So one of the things that you know, we do, I and mean, it's always you know scary when they say good communication skills, but as um, Jonathan said, one of the things that I have you know, learned to do is to not only focus on my speech as a sign of good communication skills there are things like eye contact there is the overall um the meaner of a person um do they feel um confident are they okay with their stutter so eye contact i you know use a lot of of um so smiling when I talk and that, you know, shows that I'm okay. <laughs> yes, I do know that I stutter, but I am okay with that. If you disclose, I think you should do that. Uh, if it makes you feel better mm. and if it makes and, and and if it gives you what you need to do to be able to convey to that person, your qualifications. Um, if you do disclose, don't spend a lot of time on stuttering because you know you have to keep in mind their job is to get the information that they need so they can pass it on to their supervisors or their bosses to make a decision. And they basically, for the most part, don't really care whether you stutter or not. They just really want to find out some information so that they can fairly be evaluate you. So if you see a job, they all say, you know, good, requires excellent communication skills. Do not think you can get that job just because they are stating that. However, you will have to show some other um, aspects of communication skills. Sorry, I'm done. It's a little long. Thank you, Doug. Those are, those are, those are great points. Um, I have had people tell me when I'm, when I, when I've been on, on, on the phone that they can hear me smiling. And I, you know, that's just such a, a cool thing to hear somebody, you know, say, because when you're smiling, you're, you tend to be more positive, positive, positive. And, you know, people can actually, sense that when we're, you know, even if we're not face, face, face to face. Um, but I also have another question, um, regarding the excellent communication skills, um, piece. So how many of us that, 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 that stutter, when we see that written in a job ad, 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 
advertisement will think that we're not qualified and we don't even apply. Doug, <laughs> unmute yourself. Oh, I, I did that a lot in the past. <laughs> okay. Now that I would, you know, still apply now. Yeah. What are others' thoughts on that? Have Have you ever discounted yourself from a job because of that? I would um uh, uh, first uh, hello everyone. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I feel the same way as far as the communication skills. Uh, years ago in the past, I would definitely be thinking of my stuttering and. Uh, and it would be kind of uh, uncomfortable, you know, seeing that phrase, good communication skills. Uh, as you get older, um, not that I'm older, I'm, I'm older now, and I'm not as, uh, you know, very, very uptight that in my scheduling. But so now when I see good communication skills, um, it, it doesn't save me. I, I just know I, um, I would disclose my scheduling right from the start. And just um, you know, to take my time, and when I just uh, disclose my stuttering, it really it helps me. I become more relaxed, and I know uh, the the person you know we're, we're on the, we're both on the same page. They they know what's going uh, on. If I have any uh, experiences, um, so uh, I, I do believe in uh, uh, disclosing the fact that you stutter. Really, in, in any situation, um, I think it's good to disclose the fact that you set up from my point of view. Uh, I feel, you know, it would probably, it probably, it would probably make uh, uh, you, you, you feel more, more comfortable. Um, so, uh, um, right now, I'm temporarily furloughed. Uh, I've been uh, working for the, the company that I'm with for 30 years. Mm. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever had to apply for unemployment. Uh, yeah. Yes, I. I uh, um, so I'm not laid off. You know, I'm still jumping early, early. I uh, don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um. So. Uh, so uh, I'm glad I, uh, I've attended this webinar to get some, uh, uh, you know, some good advice. So you know, we'll see what happens. Um. Yes, if I we were to have to uh, attend and uh, be part of an interview, like I guess I would still get right from the start. That's great, Laverne. Thank you for share for share for sharing that. And uh, yeah, one of my favorite people just came in, Michelle. And hopefully, you'll allow us to put you on the spot. Um, Michelle did a mock interview uh, session um, with both me and Carl. I. I, I believe, and you, and Michelle just recently had an interview. Um, are you okay with, um, sharing, uh, sharing with us how it went? Hi, Pam. Yes, definitely. Hi. hi, hi everyone. Hi, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just finished my job interview and it was great. Um, every time before I start my job, um, before I start my, uh, my interview, um, I tell, I, 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 uh, tell them, um, that I'm someone who's a daughter. And this time my interviewer, um, he told me, he told me, um, the, um, the, um, the, that he also uh he, he also he is someone who's a daughter and wow. that uh, yeah and that uh, um that from age uh, uh, from four to nine years old he used to go weekly um to, um uh, to a speech uh, um to a speech uh, um 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 therapy and it was great and he asked me about like um some uh, situation um i said i said i said more and stuff like that hmm. 
Um, can you tell us how helpful it was for you to do a practice interview um, with two different people who stutter? Um, it was really good. Um, my first time ever I did an interview or a mock, a mock interview, it was with Pam. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my first Zoom call was with was with Carl. Um, I think in both I did really, really horrible job, but I've learned I've learned so much from them and I took so much notes and um and I really and I really and I really and I really, really practice on um, so much after 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 each uh, each one and uh, yeah thank you michelle i just wanted to have that be a sneaky way to plug the mock interviews um that, yeah, that was amazing yeah it, it's, it's just was amazing and uh, and uh, i advise everyone uh, um they um to do it as much as they can because it is really helpful yeah Thank you so much for sharing share, 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 sharing that. Um, do does anybody else have any um, questions or feedback that they they they'd like they they they'd like to share? We're closing in on our end time, but we do have a few more minutes. If anybody else wants to wants to speak 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 up or or ask something in the chat box, Adam. Okay. <laughs> um, Adam, you're on mute again. On mute. There you go. Again. Uh, all right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, uh, is this? Uh, is this? Uh, is this replayed after replayed after this? Yes, we'll have the re we'll have the recording of when? this session available probably by Thursday or Friday. I will watch it. This was fantastic. You guys are great. Thank you, Carl, Ian, Jonathan, Anne Laverne, and Alan, Cara, Frank, Jennifer, In Focus, Michelle, Carlos, Gabe, Pam, David, Tammy, Sierra, Sadie, Barbara. I just said all those names perfectly. Who says that we can't say <laughs> our own names? <laughs> Adam, Thank you, Adam. Oh, we can say our names. Come on. We need Thank confidence. You. We need confidence. I'm going to share my screen um, because we have a couple of uh, a couple more slides. So I know at the very beginning, um, am I on mute? I'm going to make sure I'm not nope. on mute. Okay. Nope. You're Perfect. good. So we do have a, a few upcoming NSA sponsored events that we wanted to tell you guys about. So we're going to be doing a few more webinars for the fall. Um, we're going to have one next month that's going to be hosted by Pam and Charlie Adams, who's another person on our We Stutter at Work um, committee, it's going to be about covert uh, stuttering. So it's going to be uh, dropping the C in covert stuttering at work. Um, then we're going to have a couple um, that will be facilitated uh, by myself and Jonathan. Um, there, It'll be split into two parts, um, but it's going to be about unpacking career success barriers for people who stutter. First one is going to be on October 22nd, or 27th, and the second one will be on November 17th. Um, as Pam uh, mentioned at the very be, uh, at the very beginning, there um, are going to be a few NSA c c connects, which are webinars that are put on by the by the NSA. There will be one tonight that's actually going to be uh, focused and led by SLP, so speech language pathologists who stutter. So that should be a pretty interesting uh, conversation. And then there will also be one, uh, this, um, this, this, there's also going to be one this Thursday as well. So it's going to be an open mic night. So it'll be similar to today. Um, you know, folks will have the floor and they'll kind of be able to share and ask questions. So 
those are all always a pretty good time and I know that folks really enjoy those. Um, there's also going to be one planned for September 8th and that's going to be on supporting your child who stutters. Um, and I know that uh, John Moore has been doing an awesome job at at at, um, at plugging the We Stutter at Work Teams links, um, but just wanted to share with you guys our link. Um, so if you go to westutter.org uh, forward slash career success. We have the recordings of all of our past webinars there. We also have the link to sign up for uh, mock interviews and and we also have career profiles. And so, you know, if there's a particular job, you know, that you're that you are that you are interested in or if you just want to read about the journey of particular people think it's better, then that's on there as well. So um, I will turn it back over to Pam to kind of uh, <laughs> Can you make sure that you have your, your mics on, 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 on mute? And we are going to be heading into wrap, wrapping up this, this, this time. Um, but again, I want to just thank everybody who, uh, was courageous enough to, to ask, ask and answer questions. And I also want to thank those of you that, um, are, are international colleagues and friends for, for, for joining in. Um, it, you know, it's, it's always nice to have other people's perspective perspectives and realize that no matter where we are in the world that we that we all um uh you know can share 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 this experience um i'd like to put one more person on the spot if that's okay and then we'll wrap up um um a good friend and colleague helen carpenter is here um and helen does not does 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 not uh stu stutter stammer she's an honorary um, stammerer, but I just wanted to just get your, um, um, perspective of what it's like to join in these events from, from a, from a fluent person's perspective, perspective. Thank you, Pam. Um, well, it's, it's an extraordinary experience really, because I cannot think for anyone fluent, how you could possibly be in a setting like this and hear more than one stammering, stuttering voice at the same time. And I don't think most people give a second thought to the fact that every stuttering voice is unique in the same way that every voice is unique. And in order to understand and unpack the issues that surround applications for jobs and being in a setting like this, us 99% have to hear all these different voices in order to understand what the inside strengths and abilities uh, people who stammer, stutter, uh, bring, whether to the workplace or life in general. And so all of this is really about one big engaging conversation. So I guess all I can say to round up my own comments is a thank you that I'm able to be in here, really, because it's, it's absolutely um, a window into something that actually the rest of the time we have no other means to access because the difficulty of disclosure, on the one hand, is also a closed window for us lot on the other because we cannot understand without disclosure. That's it, yes. really. Yeah, and thank you, Helen, for letting me put you on the spot. But you and I have talked, talked, talked about this um, before, and it really, it just has struck home for me many times. Um, what you have learned um, as 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 a fluent person um, when you join conversations with um, pe pe people who stutter and stammer. So thank you for share share sharing your thoughts. 
Um, Thank you for inviting me in. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. And at this point, we we are gonna we are gonna wind down. Although I think Carl and I both feel and suspect that we could we could probably go long long longer because this has really been an amazing conversation. But I want to thank you all for um uh being being here today and for being courageous enough to you know stutter openly somebody at the beginning said she wasn't used to doing that so we're really happy 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 that um that you have um we will have the record recording uh of this video like i said probably available um at the end of the week and we will send that out to everybody um who was here and that had read read registered and if you notice the chat Box. There's always such great information in the chat trans, trans, transcript. We will send that out as well. So thank, thank, thank you all for being here. This was such an amazing conversation. And Carl, I'll let you close it out. Yeah, um, I just want to agree with Pam and just say uh, thank you everyone for attending. And as the and as the NSA's motto and kind of what we want to promote, if you stutter, you're not alone. I know that's probably really cheesy to say, but it really is true. So thanks everyone for coming and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. Take care now.